Welcome ladies and gentlemen, here we are. I'm making this video first because, well, some time ago I did make the So They Came video. And to that point was, if you saw something like that, you better speak up because, well, if one day happens to you, well, you wouldn't have nobody to speak up for you. So here we are. I'm putting more or less my time where my mouth is. Now, another reason is... I took a, long, uh, a lot more time than most of the people who end up covering this. Because, one, I want to see what was the overall situation, more or less, not only between uh, the two of the parties. I wanted to find out if there was more parties involved. And, lo and behold, yes, there is. Not only that, but today we have a lovely hit piece from PC Gamer that did end up prompting me to say, well, now it's the time. Not only that, but there is some interesting facts that I saw pop up and it wasn't talk on most of the videos about the subject. Well, everyone is ready? Here we go. First, I'm gonna present the sum of the parties on, involved in this interesting case. Then, of course, I'm gonna give a rough timeline about how things happen. Here and there, there will be some personal opinion about it. what happened during those points. Lastly, I'm gonna give my own conclusion about this entire shit show. Let me start with Studio FOW. Studio FOW is a company that focuses on animation, pornographic animation, 3D pornographic animation. And in 2018, they launched their Kickstarter for a, a pornographic game, a mixer of a shoot 'em up and a great combat with RPG elements and a somewhat, I don't know, dating sim aspect. Don't expect this to be a, uh, a real dating sim. Well, I don't know what I'm gonna expect on that part because, well, that's the only part that YouTube won't allow anyone to showcase. Maybe there will be a brave soul who will make a Pornhub account just to do a let's play on it. It won't be me. I will be busy with other stuff. Subversive was successful on their Kickstarter. And now is on the way to a 2021 twin release date. According to the developer, the release date, the release of the game will be handled in more or less chapter base, with the first chapter coming with three of their first waifus plus the beginnings the beginning chapter. More chapters will be added during development and more characters also will be added during development. Studio FOW got in more or less besides the usual by being a pornographic company to controversies. One, they got kicked by Patreon, which, which is something that is not very difficult nowadays because some of their decisions according to some of their animations. Last but not least, after a little bit after their Kickstarter was up and funded, Tin Pool, who has a subversive site, a new site, coming end up coming in contact with FOW, and well, there was their own controversy. One claimed that the other said to him to lure up, and that is where news stand. I didn't search anything else about that situation because it's not very relevant to here. Just pointing up, there is some of the controversy that Studio FLW got into being the two majors then you will find if you look up yourself. Now, let's go for the second party of this interesting situation. Arch or Arch Warhammer is a YouTuber that focuses doing lore videos mainly on Warhammer, both 40k and fantasy. 
but he also did branch out from to other topics starship troopers star wars at some point and vampire during the announcement of vampire the masquerade bloodlines 2 arch has more than 200k subscribers at the moment a large quantity of followers both from twitter and parlor he still maintains Patreon and Subscribestar. The quality of their videos are well, remarkable and that is one of the things that nobody can complain even when complaining about his personality. Arch political view align more to a conservative stance and because of that he also bolstered uh, uh, anti-SJW and anti politically correctness on his channel. Because of this, he was also called, uh, here we go, sexist, homophobic, transphobic, uh, racist, Sargon adjacent, uh, Nazi, fascist, Islamophobic, and all of the ones in the book. Besides this, Arch also got in a couple of controversies more recently being both the Warhammer community, uh, when Games Workshop asked, quote-unquote, for him to remove the Warhammer of, the, of his channel, because they were in the belief, the person that sent his email, that he was infringing on their copyright. Although Archie decided to take the moral, right, moral high ground on that subject, and simply took from the title of the channel, now rebranding himself as Arch. Other controversies involved Warhammer was after Games Workshop released a statement saying that Warhammer is for everyone, but Arch rebuckled that with a second, uh, another campaign, an email campaign, saying that Warhammer is for everyone, allowing then everyone, no matter your political view or whatever, to enjoy a hobby. Remember, hobbies are made for you or anyone else to escape the reality and to have a good time, not to bring your own personal politics. Besides that, Arch does end up having a lot of uh, controversy on Twitter, more or less because, well, he doesn't interact too much on Twitter, which means then a lot of people end up rising against him until someone else comes or he himself decides to log in on that. On that fucking hell there is Twitter. Now, we have more or less both of the parties. How about we go a little bit to the situation at hand? Studio FOW, by their own admission and by Arch's account, approach Arch for a collaboration. A video where uh, Arch would showcase, the developer would showcase the main hub of the game, the ship. And both of the combats, being the tactical grid combat and the shoot and up combat. During that, Arch was able to ask questions to the developer, and both of them seemed to be very cordial to each other, and the developer seemed to be very upfront with any questions that Arch had. The video was about 40 something minutes, and it was a moderately success. On the video release, Subversive, both on Studio FOW, both on their official Discord and on their Kickstarter and on Reddit, post the video. And the announcement, both for their release strategy and for the poster of the game itself. Not, a, not too much later after this, Studio FOW, on their official Discord, post a statement. Here will be the statement on it full. After that, not more than two hours later, Studio FOW redact that statement. I may be wrong on the timeline, but on the time gap between the redaction and that. During that period of time, V, a friend of Arch, another YouTuber too, made a video uh, and he more or less predicted some of the events that would happen later and comment on the situation at hand. Also, Arch did update his original video with a pinned comment 
urging everyone to stay calm and the situation could be just a misunderstanding. After that, not too much later, Studio FOW offer a reaction from that. They retracted the statement, posting a new statement. Later that, also Arch did update uh, the same pinned comment, saying they he ended up getting in touch and the situation was more or less misunderstanding. After this statement, the apology quote unquote statement, there was this two other quotes during on the official Discord. Now, out of the normal situation and the timeline to a little bit of a personal thing. Okay, Studio FOW, I understood your point. Yes, it's not very usual for companies to put a full apology. And, of course, behind closed doors, it said that you did apologize to Arch. But, and Arch was satisfied by that. I have to say something. It's not because most of the companies don't do something then you shouldn't do yourself. Most of the companies suck ass and nickel and dime everyone. It's not because of that is common a common occurrence on gaming then you will do too. In the same way then it's not because it's a common occurrence to not apologize when you fuck up and well you did a big fucked up to not publicly apologize. I expect Especially for the later down the line. Okay, everyone is with me now. We are going to get out of from my character and back to the situation at hand. More or less, a little bit after, Arch himself made a second video updating the situation. Pointing out what happened. Now, after that, the situation did escalate a little bit on the Steam forums. Where a couple people were not happy by the decision that Studio FOW did by being a Higgs decision, uh, a pr decision that was by pure oppression or whatever was the reason. A lot of people were uh, very unhappy with the way that FOW did conduct the situation. Some people were not aware of who was Arch was and they questioned. After a very similar a very similar uh, introduction to who Arch was and what the situation was at the time than I did on the Arch introduction. Discussions got a little bit heated and as you can see here not later down that line, Steam Forum moderation decides to, well, clear everything out. No discussion about the incident would be allowed, only discussion on the game. Mind you, Steam doesn't have a quote-unquote official moderator. It does have quote I think, for what I noticed during the evolution of that, uh, the subversive forums thing. It's more or less a voluntary one. Who, I might add, does do a very great job to maintain in the form on track and keep discussion focused only about the game. I take my hat for you, my good sir. Now, more or less, that is everything. And who, of course, one of these predictions came true. Let us understand the point. Studio FOW on their original statement call Arch a racist. Despite whatever you believe, if it is true or not, a public com a company made a public statement calling someone a racist. Now, mind you, this has already happened in many times, but never with the exactly same wording. More like, for example, during the Word of Worship situation, was controversial statements or more or less politically minded words that would not affect both of the parties or, well, create some disaster. Now, today, PC Gamer made a hit piece on Arch and not, af not long after, to be honest, because I was when I awoke the 
uh, Heat Piss was already up. Not only did Peace was already up, but their comment was already locked, with only six persons being able to do to leave their insightful comment showing how PC Gamer is out of touch and the journals are up for blood. Well, ladies and gentlemen, more or less, this is the end of the situation. With a quick recap right now is... Arch was approached by FLW for a collaboration where he would offer free advertisement for the game. Studio FLW did a haste or a pressure decision. Instead of doing a more PR friendly way, they simply decided to go out of their way and simply say, yeah, he's a racist. They moderate the Steam forums, they, redact, they retract the statement on Steam on Discord. Mind you, uh, some people, and that is something that I cannot confirm, I do not have any kind or type of receipts about this situation in question, so take that with a grain of salt. Say they, because they were engaging with the situation, they were banned from their official Discord. If that's the case, that is a red mark against FOW. They brought the situation to themselves, they didn't do their proper, their proper vigilance on fact checking what they were being sanded. So there it is, that's the problem. Back to the timeline, then they offer a second statement with a more or less apology, they apo uh, a non-apology on the official statement, giving that we know in closed doors an apology for Arch and state they would be focused on gaming on not on political standpoint. Steam forums were also more strictly moderate, I might add. And PC Gamer made a hit article with the tide with the big title card with the headline calling Arch a racist because the situation was subversive. Okay, this is the situation. Now we're gonna give a little bit more. I'm gonna push a little bit more with some interesting points. And in my conclusion. Now, let us end this where I do believe it begins. Now, I won't say it, this part is the ground zero, but let's say a very close one. Moderation on both the, the official Discord and in the Steam forums is something not that difficult. You can easy delete or do whatever is necessary to maintain a civil discussion on those platforms. In the case of Reddit, I'm not 100% sure, and I will give the benefit of the doubt, saying that you can't delete posts done by other users, even if you are a moderator. Which is why I'm giving this benefit of the doubt. The, there is still a lot of posts that call out the same things that I said here. Calling Arch as a racist or pushing more against the fact that uh, Studio FOW did back out on calling him a racist and so on and so forth. Now, as I said, I don't believe the subreddit, subreddit for Subverse is the ground zero. But I believe Reddit itself is. Now, not much research was done like to arrive at this conclusion. Because, well, you didn't need to. Not l much later after the first statement done by Studio FOW, uh, persons on Reddit claim a more or less responsibility and they were pretty much commemorating. As you see on the statement here, on the post here, they didn't even know who Arch really was. By that fact, they only believe he was on some alt-right circles. Now, here is the interesting thing, and this is one of the reasons why he decided to do this video. It took a couple guys on Reddit to conjure up this storm. The storm who end up with a PC gamer and a Kotaku article.
calling Arch a racist in one hand and a far right in the other hand. Well, that's interesting. Now, I said before, Arch is a larger YouTuber. And because of that, he has a big platform. A platform that he can be can use to defend himself if necessary. And even if for some reason he can't use that platform to defend himself, as I stated in the video, he does have friends. And they will, I do believe, open their platforms to defend Arch. Like I said, during any controversy that does happen on Twitter, some of his friends open their platform to do this to do that and for the kicks of pissing off a bunch of interesting people hell I did for the kicks but what if that happened to a smaller youtuber hell like I said the guy appear didn't even know who arch really was if you're taking his statement for truth. If the guy had like less than half what Arch does have, it's more a loner guy, um, lone wolf type of guy who doesn't do much collab, who doesn't have much friends on the platform like Arch does. The guy would be dead. It's a good buy for his YouTube channel. He's gonna be branded as a racist for the rest of his life. And that's that. Trust is something and it's really easy to lose and very hard to get back. And I will say this situation is a red mark on FOW Studio in my opinion. Another metaphor that you want to then you can use this for this situation is well if you give a inch they will take a mile and I think Studio FLW give a little bit more even than an inch. And in time, I do believe that people will learn how to push the right buttons so they can take a mile. Hell. Statement is one thing, but with an episodic game where things can be changed during development, what it will take for the push to inclusivity, like they put on their own statement, alter some of the decisions in the game. Now we may think they want to do that, but the question mark is there, isn't it? They denounce someone, or disavow someone that brought free publicity today in more than one occasion, and also who more or less were very positive on the situation when they had a controversy with Tin Pole. This is not an easy situation to be in. I don't envy any moderator or any person inside the FOW studio community because this is shitty. Hell, as I show on screenshots during this video, this is still happened today. People will go still going on Steam, like I said, a place who is more or less very well moderated, and they are pushing the same fucking narrative. So, sadly enough, I don't have a solution. It's not something it. To be honest, there is nothing that FLW can do right now. It's more or less what they can't do. In all reality, if they end up giving any more inches, I'm probably gonna lose hope on the game itself and, well, on the studio. And, well, this is their first game. Maybe this will be a red mark for day during the rest of development and on the rest of the situation. This is a dangerous precedent, people, but this is the internet that we live in. Ladies and gentlemen, the situation is far, far from over. 
you're going to still be seeing a couple of uh, other arc uh, journals talking about being at Kotaku, like they already did an article, the Twitter sphere, the blue check marks, the journals, the click. All of them are probably going to have to push their opinion about the evil, bigoted, sexist, fascist, Sargon adjacent, or whatever it is they claim Arch to be. The question is. Let's see what Studio FOW does next. Will they stick to their guns this time and, well, maintain politics out of the game? Or there will be something else that will make they bend the knee? See you around, ladies and gentlemen. I hope I don't have to make any more negative videos about a similar situation in the near future. Well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching. This was the video. If you enjoyed, leave it a like. If you didn't, leave it a dislike. If you have anything to say, please leave a comment. And if you want to see what the hell is going to be coming next on this mess, subscribe. And see you guys on the next episode.